Home coffee roasting is a great hobby, and behind that great hobby is a wonderful community of enthusiasts who like to share information. Today here at the Virtual Coffee Lab, we're going to be talking about temperatures and sharing temperatures and really determining what we do with the information that we have as we roast coffee at home, specifically with the temperature information that we have. And the first question that we're going to ask is, do we need to monitor temperatures in order to roast great coffee? And the answer is absolutely not. A few videos ago, I was roasting on the Fresh Roast SR540 for the first time. It was a great experience. I really liked the roaster a lot, and I did not once reference a temperature while roasting that coffee. I used my senses. I used the uh, my ability to monitor the color of the coffee, and time over temperature is the saying, but in this case, it was time over senses and monitoring the coffee monitoring the events. And I'll talk more about that here in just a little bit. But the outcome was great coffee. I had a really good roast and there was not one reference to a temperature while roasting that coffee. The next question is, are temperatures helpful? And the answer is absolutely. Monitoring temperatures is absolutely helpful. It provides us with a great source of information and it all depends on how we use that information and we'll talk more about that here in just a little bit. All right, well that leads us to our next question. If temperatures are helpful, how are they helpful? And the first answer is, is that they provide us really important information about the roast progress as we monitor these temperatures throughout the entire roast. From the beginning of charge to the end at drop, we're monitoring temperatures and we will be able to see the momentum of the roast, how fast it is moving. We'll be able to determine if we have a potential for roasting defects, if we're moving too quickly. And then for most of us, one of the most important elements of monitoring temperatures is the end temperature. Monitoring the end temperature when we drop the coffee. And that is going to allow us to reach a certain roast level and know what that roast level is, along with our senses, but it also is going to allow us to be roasting consistently when we can drop that coffee at the same temperature each time. So those are just some reasons why monitoring temperatures is really helpful. So if monitoring temperatures is good and it is helpful, then what's the big deal? Why are we even talking about this? And this is kind of an important point for me because I encounter this weekly. Every time that I put a video out, almost every time, I will have people ask me questions about temperatures. Why I did this with a certain temperature or what temperature would I recommend be at at this point in the roast. And that is where it gets complicated because the information that I'm sharing is relevant to my roaster, my environment, my ambient room that I'm in roasting, the type of coffee that I'm roasting, how much coffee weight I'm roasting, and the roast level or the roast style, all of that. There's going to be a lot of variables. And so unless all of that is exactly the same and it's not possible for it to be exactly the same, then it's difficult to, to say concretely, you need to be at this temperature at this time. And we'll talk more about the best way to do that, but sharing temperatures it can be misleading. I did this uh, in a video. I had a be more roasting recipe that I shared and I was talking temperatures and somebody tried to repeat the roast and their outcome was different. They weren't really happy with their outcome and some of it could have been, you know, personal taste and what we're tasting. That's somewhat subjective. But the other is that the uh, environment that we're in, the, the room that I'm roasting and compared the temperature compared to their temperature or even the voltage from the wall could be different. There's so many different elements, the amount of coffee, the type of beans, the type of process, all of that is going to have an influence on the outcome. And so it's best that we don't focus on temperatures for roasting coffee when we're sharing with other people. Another really important question that we need to ask is, are the temperatures that we're measuring, are they reliable information? 
And that might sound like a silly question to ask because, gosh, you know, we're dealing with digital devices, of course, it's accurate, right? Well, it depends on how we interpret those temperatures. Think about it this way. Let's say that you have um, an air roaster and you are using the temperature that is being read to you from the built-in sensor. I'll use the fresh roast for an example. That sensor is built in at the bottom of the roaster right where the hot air blows into the roasting device itself. So how might that temperature be different than the temperature at the very top edge of the bean mass? It's gonna be quite different. It's gonna be really different. Same on the beam more. If I were to take a probe and put it back at the very back of the drum that spins around, right on the back edge of the drum, it's only uh, a half of an inch away from the heating element, the primary heat source of that roaster. That temperature is going to be a lot hotter there than it will be on the other side of the drum, on the side near the window it's going to be miles apart temperature wise. And so we're going to have different temperatures that we're reading. So the question is, where are we reading the temperatures from? And how should we interpret that information? Is it helpful? Well, once we become familiar with our roasters and we have several roasts under our belt, we will be able to apply the temperature readings that we're seeing to help us understand what's happening in the roasting environment. But what happens when you add more than one temperature? What happens when you're reading two different temperatures? Where should you read them from? And how might you use that information to help you roast better coffee? That's one of the questions I'm going to help us try to explain and answer in some future videos. By the way, if you are watching my videos for the first time, welcome to the Virtual Coffee Lab. Thanks for joining me today. And if you like what you're seeing, hit the like button. For those that have been watching for a long time, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Subscribe, that really helps me out. And again, hit the like button. That tells YouTube that you've enjoyed this video and it might be helpful for other home coffee roasters. So in future videos, my intention is to take a few different roasting devices and take a look at the measurement of the temperature and where that's taking place within the roaster so that we can talk about how those temperatures might be interpreted. What should we do with that information? This is going to be, I think, really helpful and really enlightening because I've already done this with a few of these roasters and some of the things that I learned were really surprising. Um, I've had conversations about be more temperatures. I've had conversations with some people about the fresh roast temperatures. And even on my drum roaster, a lot of conversations about that. This has three probes. And so we'll be talking about temperatures. But all of the while that we're doing this, we're going to be roasting coffee. So we're going to be roasting coffee together, trying different things as we roast. We'll be tasting the coffee, but we'll be talking temperatures in light of everything that we just talked about here today. And the purpose of that is to help us to have some takeaway so that we, when we roast on our own roasting machines and we are looking at temperatures, we will have a much better understanding of what we're looking at and how we can use that information. If you'd like to share some comments about your experiences with monitoring temperatures with your roasting device, please share those in the comments. Let me know the type of roaster you're using, if you've made any modifications, what temperatures are you monitoring, and how is that information helpful to you. The conversations that we have, these comments that you leave, are being read by people that are trying to learn how to roast coffee. They're trying to understand what's happening to their beans. And I didn't spend any time really talking about roasting theory today or roasting events or anything like that. I've got videos that deal with that stuff. You can check those out. But we're going to be putting all this together when we start to work with these roasting devices with monitoring temperatures. We're going to be talking about the events, the watching the colors, what we're smelling, all of that. We're going to be putting the whole thing together and I hope that it'll be a benefit for everyone here. If you have other comments, recommendations, things you'd like to see me do here on this channel, share those as well. And I really appreciate you guys being here today. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you have a great week roasting. We'll see you next time.